Um, have you guys read the series at all? I no. just read it, no. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard really good things about it, and a former Marvel editor that I knew a long yeah. time ago was writing it, so I'm going to check thinking, it out and trade paperback. I was really <laughs> impressed, because it's issue five, and I wasn't really expecting to be able to, to get what was going on right away, but yeah. I was surprised by, um, you know, by, by how how clean and, and easy to follow it was. I, I liked how, you know, it, it, it didn't look cluttered, the dialogue wasn't too overly expository, and yet all of the information came across, and like you said, it, it talks about some interesting stuff, so. It's very cinematic, I think. I think it eventually will be a main <laughs> Yeah, I think it actually has an option. I don't want to talk Cool, so definitely pick up Draft It. Uh, moving on, Runaways, number 29 by Josh Whedon. Um, <laughs> tweet? Tweet? The song was fun. Oh. <laughs> I made a noise. <laughs> <laughs> I think just totally weird for some reason. Uh, people Bert don't like birds. You guys hear? All right, cool. Uh, what do you guys think of Runaways? I think I, I like this art. Uh, it's got the J, the J Man on this, it. Yeah, this is the first, uh, well, not the first Runaways I'm like, but I just feel like there's way too much stuff. I'm almost lost in it. It's too much going there's on. There's too much stuff without punch holes in it. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? there's like, nobody crashing. This. Yeah, there's no one, you know, no like sonic boom. No, you know what? I'm actually <laughs> going to agree with Pete a little bit. Uh, I like the issue. Uh, it's obviously it's well written. Uh, it's very good. I love Runaways, but it's too cluttered. You know, the Runaways is supposed to be about these characters, these six or seven characters who are part of the Runaways. He's introduced yeah. probably like 30 new yeah. characters. Well, and also there are like, there are four rival gangs. They've traveled back in time, and it's like New York City in like the 30s or something. And they're like, like, yeah, depression. Yeah, uh, there are like four rival like mutant gangs, and they all kind of look and sound a little bit the same. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, the gold brick man's coming at you. You're like, which one is me? <laughs> it's just the whole time you hear well-realized, very specific characters, but I have no idea who anybody is. Yeah. And then there's this great splash page where everybody's fighting, and I was like, I don't know what side it is. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's so many heads. Yeah. There's a page, and it's just human heads. <laughs> no, uh, but I like it. I like old-timey things, though, and this is nice. Yeah, it's good. It's like uh, drinking a malt. <laughs> you know what I mean? uh, you can tell me later. Uh, I am looking forward to how this turns out. I guess more than anything. Uh, right now, this is—it's almost like he set up all these characters so he can kill off as many people I think as possible. Though my criticism is, The Runaways has been such a great, consistent book, and the Joss Whedon took over, and he's like, "All right, enough of that shit. Here's my story, and then do whatever you want." Because it's going to have to go back to deal with all these other storylines from the earlier series. Right. And this stuff is like a, it's like a vacation from the regular book. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> let's move on and talk about The Order, number eight. This is another one of our favorite series on this show, for the most part. Um, <laughs> Sometimes this, your tone hurts me, Alex. <laughs> I have to say, this is the second time the heart breaks a little bit in yeah. the show. Uh, oh, because God. this series is so good, and I'm so upset that it's ending now. Yeah. Which I did not expect from the first issue. I know that when we were talking I about did. it... <laughs> you thought it was Your problem with it is there's too much dialogue. Well, that and the fact that it's the same stupid boxes every first, like, three It's a story. It's, it's, it's very, very uncreative. It's <laughs> <laughs> very great. It's yeah. a, a way of setting the story, structuring the story. Every, so. every story begins and ends essentially with an interview of one of the characters that in some way is going to get some focus in the issue. It's them being interviewed before the team was formed, and then they're kind of the central character in the story of It's almost Mark. like it's lost a, in a certain way. Oh, like, Jesus you're right, though. You are correct. <laughs> what am I doing again? No, it's just it's not a popular thing to say. I don't want to... Well, I don't know about that. I'm just saying that, like, it's kind of a stupid, like, they're in therapy afterwards. Like, they're talking about things that happen, and it's like, how does that make you feel? And then they go into more fucking dialogue about, oh, whoa. It's just, ah. Oh. <laughs> you guys the order at all? No, I haven't, but it has so much dialogue. That's an awful thing. And we want, <laughs> we just want characters to you know, beat up trains on train tracks and be ready. Oh, and man. man. Oh. All right, listen. All right, listen. And yet, I agree with you 100% about the lost. <laughs> the lost. Uh. 
<laughs> for the record, I, I enjoy dialogue if it's done well, but sometimes dialogue for dialogue, like she was talking about earlier, it's just I don't want to deal with it. Don't make her <laughs> I think she she was saying when she was talking about the the co couple times before when she was talking about. I don't think it's dialogue for dialogue's sake. It's ri a ridiculously rich world that Matt Fraction. <laughs> what do you see do? about that? Uh, He's gonna be busy for like twenty five minutes. <laughs> okay, actually, we're gonna move on and talk about the next issue then, while you're taking a look at that, because this is gonna show how crazy you are. Okay, uh, last week we we're gonna talk about Terror Inc. Number Five. This has been one of my favorite series that's coming out right now. Basically, the entire thing is all nudity, people getting their limbs ripped off, sliced in half, people blowing themselves up, gigantic splash pages of huge explosions, while still being based in character and history and being awesome. Pete, you hate this series. Why? Yes. <laughs> I do. I hate this what? series. What? <laughs> it's... it's too weird, man. I can't get into it. It's, it's like they're like they're ripping off everybody's arms and then they're putting them back on like a fucking weird jigsaw puzzle. They're like whose arm is this? Oh, I'm gonna use this one. It's like so the guy who's your just problem, your problem is too much word or jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's just it's freaky, man. It's there's like people are ripping heads off. It's just there. It's violence for violence' sake. There's no. <laughs> I know. I know. I said. I said you guys gonna rip on me when I yeah. talk about this because it doesn't. You know. Go back to the Hulk issue. I know. Yeah. I know. I can get behind the Hulk smashing a plane. You know what I mean? But th th this, this is just, it's insane. It's just like there's no, there's no reality in it. So I, I'm not like the Hulk smashing a plane. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Finally. I don't wow. know. I don't know. I, I don't too know. many words. Too many words. <laughs> like no, it. I just, I don't, I don't know. I can't defend it. I just can't get into it. I don't know what. What it is about, about it that turns me off? Because when you described it to me, you're like, you're gonna love this, and then you went through all the things, and I was like, ooh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, this is weird. I can't. You like the series, also, right? Yeah, I like it. Um, I haven't read. I've only read two issues, this one and one other one, and it's cool. I like the main character. Uh, yeah, and I, I thought the story was cool. Even I thought it was too bloody, the, like they're ripping this. Yeah, I tested that. I was like, I don't, I don't even see this. It's crazy. But I think it's great. I mean, it yeah. really, it's it's clearly a Max title. It's for adults. It's really well written. It's a great story arc. Each issue was great. And even though you're the main character is like a dead well, man that putting body parts on him, you're like, oh, he's very nice and, and it has a <laughs> <laughs> book is very well written. The characters are very well written and delineated, and they they each have their own very specific voice. Maybe you don't, just don't like good things. <laughs> I hope that's not true. <laughs> One of the only times Nicole act, um, asked me to change artwork in Cable and Deadpool, she told me that there was too much blood splatter coming out of this guy's head when he was in the <laughs> so, so that's, what? you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how you quantify that. Yeah. Too much blood splatter. Yeah, how much is too much? Actually, four pints. Well, this is a Max book, and Cable's Deadpool is not a Max book, so there's a difference. That, that, I think I that one issue, that was actually the first issue that I drew. For some reason, I decided that month it was going to be an all-ages book, and it was an issue strictly about assassination. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, what do you do then? So, yeah, kids got to learn about that. I remember Nicole trying to explain the rating system to me. I'm such a <laughs> Wait, so, what does that mean exactly? <laughs> and that's it for the stack! <laughs>